Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you a homeschool haul. These are all books and they are primarily for our math and history main lesson blocks. Now the history books I want to share with you today are ones that are included in the lesson plans for our history units, but we didn't get an opportunity to read them during our history units, so we're going to be reading them now. And the math books I have are for our upcoming school year. So I am recording this at the end end of the school year for 2020-2021 and these resources are primarily going to be used with the start of the new school year with our math main lesson block which always starts off our school year but these history books look so inviting and they're really quick since they're picture books so I'm hoping that we can include these as part of our opening activities throughout the remainder of the school year. So I want to share the history books with you first. We have a few from the series, The Warlord's Beads, The Warlord's Alarm. We also have The Warlord's Kites and The Warlord's Messengers. Now, this or all these books were inspired by this first book that we got many years ago called The Warlord's Puzzle, A Mathematical Adventure. I didn't know that there were others in the series, and after many years, I happened upon these other ones. So I want to first show you the book that inspired four books in this haul, and this one is called The Warlord's Puzzle, which my children love. It's really beautifully illustrated. We love the story and at the back of the book it comes with a tangram that you can photocopy and then try to assemble you have to forget what it looks like and then try to assemble it. So we really, really enjoyed this book. And while I was looking for some additional picture books for our history units, which were on the Islamic Golden Age, the Silk Road, Ibn Battuta's Journey, West Africa and ancient China, we came upon more in that series and I was so excited. I purchased as many as I could find that were in stock, whether they specifically worked with our unit or not. There are some that are mathematical. Actually, they are all mathematical. I take it back. They're all mathematical, but they're also set in Asia. And so I found that to be a great way to tie in both of those units together. So this one's called the Warlord's Beads. And again, you can see those beautiful illustrations that are similar to the warlord's puzzle and this is a mathematical adventure that i am really excited to read with my children so these books are coordinating with both our history units and our math units now we'll probably use these more for content in our math units and more for opening activities in our history units we also have the warlord's kites that's another mathematical adventure and again, beautifully illustrated. And I can't tell you much yet about the stories, but on the review videos for our math units, you'll find out more about how we enjoyed these books and how we used them in our math unit. They're also included in our history unit as part of our opening activities as well. So the Warlord's Alarm, another mathematical adventure. The illustrations here seem a little bit different than the other ones in that they don't seem quite as rich and I'm wondering uh, if there is a difference in the illustrators so let's just let's just about that uh, no they're the same illustrators so maybe just a, a slightly different style for that illustrator and then the last one is called the warlord's messenger and then Again, similar style. I'm really excited about uh, these stories. Okay, so those books are... I'm so happy to find these books as part of those, that series just because I enjoyed this first one so much. And if there are more in the series or they plan to include more, then I'll definitely be adding them into um, our homeschool library. Okay, so let's move on to some of the other history books. We have The Great Adventures of Zhang He by Demi. I'm really enjoying the books by Demi. We've had them in our homeschool for a while, but because a lot of the books that she writes are either biographies or histories, some, some kind of uh, historical time period, we, and because of where she focuses her biographies and histories around, we haven't had the opportunity to include them in the last, say, four or five years because our history units have been focused on other areas of the world. So I am really, really happy for it. She must have 
dozens and dozens of books because every time I go looking for a particular subject area within history or biography, one of her books always pops up. What I like about these books is that the illustrations are they have an iconic style that you're going to find in pretty much all of her books. They include this sort of gold metallic detail in the illustrations and the illustrations are always set on a two page spread with the columns on either end being for the text and so that's just something that is i've seen actually i take it back there there was i think the empty pot wasn't wasn't illustrated that way but pretty much all the other books i've seen are illustrated in this manner. The other thing that's curious about these books is that they are really long picture books. Their picture books really vary from the super quick ones that you can read to a toddler or a kindergartner. And then there are these ones which you might overlook as a picture book because, or rather you might overlook as a resource because it is a picture book, but actually it makes a really great addition to your curriculum or your unit study for children about third through eighth grade is the way that I've been using them. Okay, so let's put that one aside and look at this one. If you've seen this in my haul before, um, that's because I accidentally bought the same book twice and this has now happened to me three times. And I, I, I think I thought there was another book in this series by Fatima Sharafuddin. I think I pronounced that incorrectly. And uh, and so I'm going to have to go back and look. I think there was Ibn Khaldun, but I could be wrong. There is Ibn Battuta and there is Ibn Sina. So we already have this book. We've already read it. We enjoy it. And so I'm going to exchange this book for the one that we need because that was quite a surprise that we actually already had it. Well, it was more of an embarrassment rather than a surprise. Okay, so let's move on. We have... A picture book here for Tales from Ancient India, and this is called The Elephant's Friend. And when we were doing our Silk Road unit, we touched upon India just a little bit. And with our Islamic unit, our Golden Age of Islam unit, again, we're touching on India just a little bit. We did Ancient China. We did Mongolia with Marco Polo and Genghis Khan. We did Ibn Battuta. We did West Africa. But we didn't actually focus on Ancient India yet. We've done it in the past, but not since... I've started putting together my own resources to create our own main lesson blocks and unit studies inspired by the live education Waldorf curriculum. And so I am starting to collect resources. We have a few, but I'm starting to collect more resources for a unit on India and ancient India. And I'm actually, I don't really care for books that are laid out like comic books. And my children also don't really go for them either, which is kind of a curious thing. But I, and I didn't know that when we got this book, a lot of times we're looking at books, we only get to see the cover. We, sometimes on Amazon, you can, you can see the insides of books. So part of me sharing the books that we get for our homeschool is to show what the insides look like so that you can get a good feel of the the age group that it's written for, what the insides look like, how big it is, the font size, the illustrations. That way you can better choose the books that are going to work for your homeschool. So this one's like the illustrations don't really work for me. They, they seem a little bit... Mm, basic and cartoonish and I, I prefer other kinds of illustrations but we will still include it in our unit uh, in part because I have it in part also because we do not have a lot of resources yet. So this is another math book that's going to be a part of our unit coming up in the fall. We're going to be working on fractions and the introduction and the working through new mathematical concepts usually takes a really long time. So this is uh, the, our, I want to say a formal introduction to fractions, but honestly, children are around fractions long before you actually sit down and put pen to paper. So this book is called Full, Full House, An Invitation to Fractions. And I love, love, love including picture books whenever possible for any of our units, but I especially liked including them in our math unit because you get to experience math in a different way rather than just through worksheets, which is typically a way to become proficient in math concepts when you're in a classroom setting. Now, math is all around us, of course, and we can utilize math concepts when we're cooking and when we're traveling and when we're measuring, but sometimes we forget to, to do that with our children. 
And so including picture books is also a nice way to include those math concepts in a fun, uh, enjoyable story format. And you may not learn the entire concept in the story, but it's a nice way to, to introduce and then maybe review those math concepts. You'll definitely need to practice at some point doing something that is physical, like a hands-on activity or doing something that's like a worksheet. Okay, so I totally don't care for the illustrations in this picture book, but I, there, it seems like you, it seems like there aren't quite as many resources for math picture books compared to other uh, subject areas. So whenever I find a math picture book, I am sure to add it to our collection. There are some that we love to read over and over again, and there's, there are others that just aren't as, uh, as engaging as we expected. And honestly, the other thing is that while I might not go for these illustrations as much as other illustrations, like the Warlord's Puzzle and that whole series, like I really like those illustrations. My children have different, uh, they, they have a different, um, uh, what do you call those? <laughs> Likes and dislikes. <laughs> they, 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 what, what appeals to them artistically is different than what appeals to me artistically. So what might not be something that I really like, they might like, or they just might not care at all. I think I forgot to share this one. So this one's called The Pirate Queen, A Story of Zhang Ying Sao. And I didn't know that this was going to be a little bit more of of a picture book versus a chapter book, but these illustrations are so beautiful. And this would be something that I would read as part of our opening activities for our history units. It looks really, really lovely. And I can't wait to share this book with my 10 year old daughter. Okay, so I've got one science book to share with you and then two more math books. And I've saved these for last because these are actually hand-me-downs from another homeschooling family who asked me if I might like them. And I usually say yes first, and then I go through them and decide whether we're going to keep them or not. Because when it comes from another homeschooling family, it's likely that it's going to be used within our homeschool um it, rather than just a random book, right? So this is called The Periodic Table, Elements with Style, and I'm actually super excited about this book because we need to start our chemistry unit more formally. We, we've done it now for about two years informally using hands-on projects and experiments, but now I would like to do something that's a little bit more formal with my 14-year-old, and I really am excited about this book because we don't have that many resources yet for our chemistry unit, and and I'm still collecting them. I haven't even actually really looked for them. It's just when they come my way, I'm starting to collect them. And uh, that, that whole process of collecting resources can take months or even a few years for me. And so I'm happy to include this. And it looks like a really fun book. I think that I might actually enjoy reading this. And also, I majored in chemistry when I was in college. So I should know this, right? <laughs> Not really. Okay, so the last two books I want to share with you are called Painless Fractions and Painless Algebra. These are Barron's books. They do the study guides, I believe, uh, and study for tests and, and whatnot. And so I am excited about the fractions one because, of course, we're going to be starting our fractions. But this isn't... Um, this may not get utilized as much as I'm expecting, and this might be one book that gets passed on sooner than I think, uh, because this book might be really good for a teacher, to, like say a homeschool teacher, if you want to review the math concepts that you're teaching and, and you're just a little bit rusty. I think this book might be really good for that. I think it is intended for a student, but I I sometimes get overwhelmed with content like this. It It's... It just doesn't sit well with me as a student, as a teacher. It can be very helpful. And then Painless Algebra, and this will be for my 14-year-old who is doing a combination of pre-algebra and algebra. So pre-algebra I find to be really, really different than actual algebra, and it's really solidifying all of the concepts and basic math that you're going to need in order to work through algebra successfully. Algebra can be from super basic, can take a really long time and it can go up to very rigorous and you can take less time to get through algebra. We're doing the slow route and this will be something that I would give to my son to go through. Uh, that's my intention right now, but I need to look through the book a little bit more and see if that's actually going to be a great way to use this book.
All right, so I hope you enjoyed this haul video. If you saw my last haul video, you probably noticed that that was supposed to be my last one, but I had a few more books coming in, which you just saw. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. You can find that link down in the description box below. If you'd like to check out some of our history units or math units or other haul videos, you can tap on the screen right now. Those playlists are also in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.